Thank you for joining us for another power-packed message from Dr. Miles Monroe, provided by Monroe Global Incorporated and MonroeGlobal.com. We transform followers into leaders and leaders into agents of change. We hope that this message is a blessing to you as you advance your life and discover your purpose. Now, let's go into the message. Uh, we want to focus this morning on part two of last week's segment where we talked about the value of law in kingdom living. Say that with me. The value of law in kingdom living, part two. Every single session will help you understand the role of law in life. The kingdom of God is a country. It is not a religion. That's why it's called a kingdom. A kingdom is a country headed by a king, ruled by a king with citizens. Unlike all countries, the kingdom of God is built on law. Now I'm going to show you a photograph of something that may sound strange, how it relates to law. But you're looking at a 747 Boeing jumbo jet. It weighs, write this down, 600,000 pounds. Write that down. How many? 600,000 pounds. That's more than half a million pounds. That equipment right there. That equipment can never be moved on the ground. 600 thousand pounds of weight I am sure that you have done what I've done many times you stood at the airports you looked out that glass window and I know what you said how do they fly that and if I, 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 come on be honest did you ask that question this monster jet thousands of thousands of pounds and you look at this equipment and it takes off and it flies like feather question how does 600,000 pounds fly like feather listen carefully because you and I do the same thing with our lives we look at our situation and we say to ourselves how am I going to ever get out of this? We say the same thing about our lives that we say about that massive jet. How do we get out of this situation? How do we survive what we're going through? I was speaking this morning to one of our pilots. He's a very experienced pilot. He's a member of our board. And I asked him, how does 600,000 pounds leave the ground? His answer, he said, 600,000 pounds leaves the ground because the law of gravity is canceled by another law called lift. We don't destroy the law of gravity, he says. We actually use it. He said we use the law of gravity. But we defy it by putting another law in place. I said, how do you do that? He said, when I push the throttle of 600,000 pounds, when the speed hits 160 miles per hour. The speed creates a new law. And the wings use the new law. He says, and if you stay on the ground, I couldn't understand what he said until he I said, repeat that. He said, when the aircraft hits 160 miles per hour, 
it is impossible to keep it on the ground. I'm going to say this again. He says, as long as it's still, it's impossible to move it. But when it hits a certain speed, another law kicks in. And he said to me, if it stays on the ground, it will destroy itself. This is strange. He said, if an aircraft stays on the ground at 160 miles per hour, it will destroy, just disintegrate. Because once it hits 160, it cannot stay on the ground. Because it creates another law. It's called the law of aerodynamics. Gravity surrenders to the law of lift. So what makes that aircraft fly? Laws. What's going to bring you out of your mess? Laws. There are laws that are keeping you down. I don't know why it makes noise this morning. There are laws that are causing you to be depressed. But God has some other laws that you're supposed to kick in to that's supposed to cause you to lift away from the depression. Don't pray for the depression to go away. That's my point. Gravity doesn't go away. You go away. You look at the aircraft and you say to yourself, this is impossible. It's only impossible if you stay under the law of gravity. But if you can just discover another law, gravity becomes your servant. Do you know that gravity makes the law of lift possible? Oh, I feel like shouting all by myself. The very thing that's holding you down will eventually push you up if you kick to another, another law. Gravity sometimes is some people in your life. They're trying to hold you down because they don't fight them. Create another law of love and they will push you and understand they won't know why they're pushing you but you're working at a different level then the captain told me he said now once you get up there you are operating on a completely different law gravity has let you go <laughs> And you can look down on gravity and it doesn't touch you, he says. You can look down at the earth and it has no effect on you because you are operating on a different law. But he said to me, you got to keep the speed. I said, why? He said, if you drop the speed below 150, the plane turns into a rock and falls. I said, are you telling me, Captain, that whatever got you there, got to keep you there? Oh, Jesus, have mercy. That means once you get a different level, you can't go down and keep friends and folks showing up where you are no more. You got to stay with people going to keep you where you are. Shout hallelujah, somebody. The Lord that you are operating at separates who you associate with. There are some people you cannot mix with anymore. They are pigeons and you are an eagle. This is, there's no, there's no association. And some of you are still trying to keep friends with people who in gravity
Can you imagine? Only a law lifts 600,000 pounds. Just a law. The Holy Spirit is telling us a simple truth. And here it is. Matthew 16, 18. Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Watch this. Whatever you lock up on earth, heaven will support it. Whatever you open on earth, heaven kicks in. It's a different law. He says, now the word keys, I looked it up in Hebrew. It means laws. Principles. He said, look, I will give you, look at him, I will what? Give you. Give you what? Some laws. Which means, when you were born, you didn't know them. This is why the entire year, I'm going to be teaching you the laws found in his word. Because once you, I'm living by them, friends. I'm telling you, if I tell you about my life, I don't talk much anymore about my life because behemoths get jealous. But let me tell you something. If you begin to operate on the laws, no, no, silly, I can't talk about this. You don't need to manipulate anything if you're operating by laws laws are natural the aircraft lifts naturally the pilot says if you try to keep it on the ground it will destroy itself in other words once you kick into a certain law you can help yourself you have to take off I will give you keys. That means you weren't born with them. Your church didn't teach you them. Your parents don't know them. I will give you keys. What would happen to the keys? He says, when you learn these keys, whatever you lock up. In other words, you can stop things. You can lock things up. You, you can stop things from working you can stop gravity and heaven will kick in with another law i'm going to give you laws that will bring heaven to interfere in earth look at it gravity thought it was in charge until the law of lift arrived I'm telling you God's about to do something this week to defy everything they are saying about you hallelujah God is going to do some things in your life this year that people will say that is impossible anybody got an impossible situation right now hold your hand up I got a few right now too everybody say all things are possible if I believe the laws of God. Give God a big hand clap. You're coming out of that stuff. He's going to put you at a different level. That is the key to life. The key to life, Jesus says, is learning the keys. The laws. This is why I put this to you. Write this down. The most important knowledge in life is law. The pilot is trained to understand the law of lift. That's why he goes to pilot training. They teach the pilot all the details about aerodynamics so that he knows how that machine runs. The most important knowledge on earth is laws. If you learn laws, you can defy life. Defy, that's a big word, eh? Defy means you can embarrass life. You can tell life, that's what you say, but here's what I'm going to do. Life says, that's how far I can go, but I go above where life says to stop. In other words, laws allow you to tell life, it doesn't stop here. 
I am going beyond your limitations. I am going above your fence that you built. I have some laws that will lift me above your restrictions. It's laws. Write this down. Number two, the most powerful force on earth is law. Once you learn the laws of life, life becomes your servant. You don't need to experiment in life. All you got to do is learn the laws of life and activate them and they work for you. What I love about what the pilot said to me, I can't get out of my mind. He says, when it hits 160, it creates a new law. And if you try to stay on the ground, the equipment will explode. That is incredible to me. You're getting it. Someone, one person got it. He says, look, once you hit the law, bam, you don't have to try nothing. Matter of fact, let me quote what he said to me this morning. He said, when you leave the ground at 160, he says, ready for this? He says, you lose control. And the law takes over the aircraft. Did you hear that? He said, pilots don't fly planes, they just steer them. I said, what? <laughs> Did you hear that? He says, you see, once you hit the law, it, it takes off by itself. All you got to do is steer it. God's about to take you to a level. All you got to do is sit back. Somebody showed kicking the law. He said, now, when you're on the ground, gravity is in control. And when you hit lift, lift takes control. You lose control. And he said, if you try to control the aircraft at 160 and try to keep it on the ground, it will explode. Laws are so powerful that once you learn them and you use them, you become irresistible. Yes. Let me tell you put it another way. I told you last time that laws make success automatic. Yes. Planes fly automatic. You know, automatic pilot is simply the pilot putting in the codes into the computer to steer the aircraft, not to fly it. It's flying by itself because it has another law. It just steers it. God is going to position you where you'll be like Jesus Christ. He say, uh, I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. Why? I'm under another law. I'm controlled by something bigger. I just do what he say. Go where he sent me to go. I, I, I'm just enjoying this ride. I'm just kind of staring this thing, you know. This big monster is under control of another law. That means that pilots are not in control of the aircraft. They are only steering it. The law of lift takes over. Write this down. Laws, law is inherent in creation. You know, lift was always there. Let me ask you a question to prove it. How many of you believe that Moses could have flown an aircraft in his day? I totally believe it. I believe in Genesis you could have flown an aircraft. Guaranteed. <laughs> How do I know? Because nothing that exists today did not exist when Moses was alive. I gotta go. <laughs> this, is, this is too exciting to me. Listen, all Moses had to do was to put the combinations together. There was air, there was iron ore, there was aluminum, there was wood, there was uh, oil, everything was in the earth. He just couldn't combine them to create another law. And so the Wright brothers came along and used the very stuff that was there in Moses' time. 
In other words, God don't want you to invent no new revelation for you to go to the next level. His word is forever. You got to be able to combine the pieces. You have everything you need to do anything you need to do. But you got to understand the laws. The laws of God are built in. Pilots do not create aerodynamics. It was here in Joshua time, Moses time, Ezekiel time. But they could not understand or did not understand the way we have during the Wright brothers time to combine those laws. <laughs> so please remember this one. Law is necessary. You have to live by laws. Law is also essential. If there was no gravity, you would fall on your face right now. What makes you stand up straight is gravity is pulling you to the earth. That's why you can stand up. Without that law, you will collapse. This is why when the astronauts leave the pull of gravity, they float. There's nothing to hold them straight. They, 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 they can't even control them, their own bodies. If, 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 if an astronaut was to swing his hand in space like this, he'd fall his hand. The weight would push it. See, why? Because nothing's holding him. The law of gravity is necessary in order for you to live on earth. Laws, therefore, cannot be disrespected. Write this down. The key to success in life is law. I beg you young people especially to hear me. Because somehow youthfulness believes that you don't need to live by laws. What kept me as a teenager, even as a virgin at age 25, marrying my wife, was nothing but just simple knowledge of laws. I kept my virginity because of laws. Every problem in your life is a violation of a law. There's something you violated. Laws are designed to protect you from problems. Write this down, please. Absence of law is the beginning of destruction. The law of a plant is soil. Pull the plant from the soil, you don't need to kill it. It's self-destruction. The law of fish is water. They need water. That's a law. You take a fish out of water, you ain't got to kill it. It self-destructs. When you violate law, you don't hurt law. Law hurts you. So God created life to function by law. And this is why the kingdom of God is simply the return of God's laws to earth. Can I put it this way? The goal of God was to fill the earth again with his kingdom, to bring his laws back. We call it colonization. And God put us here to establish those laws in the earth so that we can become heaven on earth. That's what God intended. God intended earth to be ruled by the laws of heaven. Earth was never to be a victim of its own local laws. It's supposed to be dominated by the laws of heaven. And therefore, the kingdom of heaven is invisible, but very practical. Laws produce the culture of heaven on earth, which makes work natural. The community of God's people are supposed to live at a different level of life where they defy what life says. Lord, make me like Jesus, please. There's a law called SYNC, S-I-N-K. That's a law I created. I mean, it exists, but that's what I call it. Everybody say SYNC. SYNC means if you go down on the long wharf out here and you step on the water, you'll sink. Okay? That's a law. Why? Gravity pulls you down and you go into the water. Jesus decided to step out on the water. 
he kicks in another law. <laughs> and the water became concrete. Now, I don't understand this, okay? Peter is next to him drinking water, drowning. He, on top of the same water, reaching out his hand. Now, this is the same water. Y'all didn't get the miracle, man. You don't get the miracle. Let me say it again. They stand on the same lake. He's standing on the water. Peter drowning right next to him. See, that means the water is responding differently to both of them. Okay. Let me just prophesy because I know it's going to happen to you. This year, God is going to show himself off in your life because of the laws you're going to obey that people right around you are going to be sinking in the same situation and you're going to be standing firm not because of the thing but because of the two different laws you're operating on. They're going to say no to the person who came right before you and say yes to you when you get to the gate. Why? Because there are going to be two different laws in response. Amen. We operate from a different set of laws. So the kingdom of God is the country of God. It has different laws. I want to train and teach you how to live under a different set of laws on earth. So that earth responds to you differently. Yes. Don't miss next week. I'm going to give you an announcement to show you how the laws work. You know, religion can, religion is gravity. <laughs> religion just holds you down. The kingdom of God is aerodynamics. It defies everything that the earth tells you you cannot do. This is why we got to learn the keys, he says. Matter of fact, let me show you something I thought was interesting. All nations are built on laws, and nations are built on law and sustained by law very quickly. And the quality of life in a nation determined by the kind of laws that people keep. And our society, our social system is based on law. In other words, Jesus would say things that he would say, you have heard it said, but it shall not be so among you. He was talking to the disciples. He said, look, he said, that's the way they live out there. But in this community, we got a different lifestyle, he says. Oh, Jesus. He said, look, you have been taught that to get money, you got to go and work all month and get paid. He said, but in this kingdom, you can catch a fish. And in the fish's mouth is enough to pay for everybody's taxes. This is a strange kingdom. Yes, Believing the ridiculous yes, is kingdom lifestyle. Yes, you got to believe what? The ridiculous. I'm begging God to help me explain this. Ladies and gentlemen, we're supposed to live as a different community. Before the end of this year, there are going to be massive testimonies coming from this group of people. I want to show you, before we go, an example of something. First of all, write this down. What is law? I'll give you a thousand definitions during the next couple of weeks. But here's one to remember. Law is inherent principles. Inherent means they are built in that regulate the nature of life. They also regulate the nature of relationships. The aircraft relationship to the earth is controlled by laws. So law is inherent. It's built in to the creation and it designs the relationships. And it also affects relationships that are both natural and supernatural, both physical and spiritual, and they guarantee maximum fulfillment. Of potential it shows you what the thing can do who would dream that a 600,000 pound aircraft could fly like a bird simply because it has the potential to do it but in order for it 
to fulfill that potential, it must use some laws. Nothing is truly impossible. Nothing is impossible. Because once you learn the laws, the laws make everything that seems impossible, possible. Please get this CD. All right. Here's the last part I want to tell you. Man was created to live by what? Natural and spiritual law. You, you, created by, you, you, you were created to live by what? Natural laws and spiritual laws. You were created to live that way. That means you, you can't decide that you're going to live by them or not decide. You were designed for that. That leads me to number two. Human relationships are also built on principles of law. How I relate to you has to do with the law. I don't again, that's too deep. Social relationships are products of law. How you relate to people who are married and not married has to be based on law. You know, I used to run around with my friends, but now I'm married. I can't run around with my friends no more. I'm married now. And the laws change. I don't see you no more. You can't see me anymore no because I got a wife now, brother. Oh, she handpicked. Yeah, I handpicked good. I'm happy. I, it's a good hand to peck me. I go with home to my wife. That's a different kind of law. You can't hang around clubs after you marry. Different laws. And if you're married, you can't hug every woman the way you hug your wife. Different kind of hugs. They're laws, man. Hey, hey. And when you're married, certain things you can't tell people that you, that's going on in your home because that ain't their business. Different laws. It's a law of silence. Hmm? And the law kicks in with your mother and fathers too. When you get married, you can't give mama $20 every week anymore. You got to ask your wife now. Oh, Lord, mama don't want $20 no more. But that's the way it works. It's a different law. You used to pay your mama's rent. For, you know, but now you're married, brother. It's a different relationship, see? All these things are a result of laws. Write this down. Law is the key to prosperity. If you follow laws, you don't need to seek prosperity. It happens naturally. I am prosperous not because I tried to be. I just obey the laws of God. And I'm talking about it's hard work sometimes to obey the laws of God. But you got to understand that if I obey this law, I win. Jesus Christ came to earth to restore law. I can't make it more simple than that. Jesus came to earth to do what? Restore law. That's what he came to do. Jesus came to earth to give us back law so we can get order back. Because law produces order. The whole world is out of order, the Bible says in Psalm 82. And law is the only solution to disorder. So he came to earth to bring law to restore order back to God's planet. And he says to us, I command you to do this. I command you to do that. Why? He's bringing law back to us. Look at 417. He says, for the time has come when he begins to preach. Repent. Why? For the country of heaven has arrived. Matthew 4, 17. Look at Matthew 4, 23. And Jesus Christ went through all Galilee, teaching and preaching in the synagogues. What? The good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness among them. He preached what? The country of God has come. Very important. Now watch this. The kingdom of God brings the law of God back to earth. And this is the message today. The value of law is that it is the key to life. When I use the word law again, please don't think about those religious laws. I'm not talking about that. Because they will destroy you. They, they will bring death. I'm talking about the laws that God placed in his wonderful creation and his spiritual revelation for you to obey. To give you life and prosperity. Look at Matthew 5, 3. Blessed are those who are what? Poor in spirit. Why? They don't need money. If they get the kingdom laws, he says, they will prosper. Look at the next one. Matthew chapter 5 verse 13. You are what? The salt of the earth. You're supposed to be the ones adding flavor and excellence. This one is good. You are the what? The light of the world. 
a city on a hill that no one could miss. Boy, one day I'm going to teach you on this verse. This is a deep verse. The Bible says if you obey God, they can't ignore you. Look at that verse. He says if you, if you follow God's laws, they will have to recognize you. They'll bring you trophies and plaques. Look at it. He says if you follow my law, you'll be like a city on a hill that cannot be hidden. When you live in God's way, even if they are jealous, they have to respect and recognize you. Abraham obeyed God's laws, and the Bible says he became the richest man in the Mesopotamia. The richest man in the whole region was a man of God. Solomon had kings traveling hundreds of miles to just to see him because of his prosperity and success in life. I prophesy that God's about to make you so prosperous that they will have to recognize you even though they don't like you. But what? He says, but your light got to shine. Write this word down, light. Hebrew word for light means knowledge. It doesn't mean you're going to glow like a bulb. It means knowledge. Hebrew word for light is what? Knowledge. Knowledge of revelation, truth. He says, if you are revelation truth, laws, you understand the laws of God, you understand God's knowledge, he says you would be like a city that they cannot escape. People come from all over the world to see where I live. Some of them are here this morning. They come to check to see where does Dr. Monroe come from? What makes this man what he is? Where does he live? What is his church like? Where, where are his people? And they come because there is a light. There's knowledge. There's revelation going out. There's lifestyle that they see and they say, I want to know where that's coming from. When you live the laws of God, they cannot ignore you. Because the laws of God brings results. Amen. Amen. I just, I was saying about people. People love successful people. They avoid failures. If you broke, people just avoid you. Have you noticed that? Yeah, you ain't got nothing. Anybody want to talk to you? Come on, be, be honest. <laughs> this is why the Bible says, if you follow the laws of God, ready for this? Ooh, I want to teach on this one day so bad. The Lord showed me this last year. He said, I told you, you will be a lender. Let me tell you something about a lender. A lender is not a borrower. I sound deep, hey. He says, my people ain't supposed to be the borrowers. The lender is always sought after. <laughs> you want to know people who got something. Hmm? Lift your hand up right now. Lord Jesus, let this word sink into the hearts of your people. Transform their revelatory thinking. Let them become receivers and practices of your law that they may experience the lifestyle of a lender. In Jesus' name, amen. Say it, I will become a lender. That's his promise. You borrowing now, that's temporary. Lending is your destiny. Having nothing in God's kingdom is always temporary. You will always have plenty in God's kingdom when you kick in those laws. Now, I want to show you the picture of this lighthouse. This is where I want to close. Yeah. Everybody said lighthouse. I found out something. A principle is actually a law like a lighthouse. We got lighthouses in the Bahamas. Here's something about lighthouses. First of all, lighthouses are guides and standards. When you are in a boat and you don't know what the ocean of life is like, you got to depend on that lighthouse. A law is like a lighthouse. Number two, Lighthouses have some principles. First of all, they are always established on rock. 
Don't confuse a lighthouse with a buoy. Some of y'all are following buoys. Buoys change location. <laughs> Lighthouses are built where? On a rock. Praise God. Laws are on a rock. Number two. Lighthouses <laughs> never move. You don't want to guide your ship by something that's moving. Laws don't change. Number three, lighthouses are a sign of warning. When you see a lighthouse, it's telling you, don't come here. Don't come close to this. See, a law not only is a blessing, it's a warning. When God gives you a law, he's trying to protect you from destruction. God says, okay, do not commit fornication. Now somehow, I'm sure the person behind you is much smarter than God. I'm, I'm sure of that. I guarantee that. We got some of the most intelligent human beings on the entire universe because they're smarter than God. God doesn't explain too much. You know, lighthouses don't talk at all. <laughs> they just what? Stand there, right, Doc? They stand and they just shine. They don't say nothing. Lighthouse has no siren. Why? They say, look, I am silently right. <laughs> the law of God is silently right. Do not commit fornication. They, they don't talk. Laws, they don't talk. My mom used to say, if you can't listen, <laughs> you will feel. Lighthouses, just like your mama, if you can't listen to the lighthouse light, you will feel the rocks on your bottom. You know, they don't explain. See, God doesn't say, like, okay, don't commit fornication because this or this, that, and that. You know, you have the psychological problems, emotional problems, have bad memories, you know, you have guilt. He said, no, no, don't commit adultery. He said, don't commit fornication. Bro, finish. He ain't going to say nothing else. It's just a warning. The troubles we create because we test the lighthouse. Let me see how close I can go to the rock and not get in. That's what we say. You know, we, we, somehow we're just smarter than God. God said, look, thou shalt not covet. That's a law. He made it a law. It's a law. He said, do not covet. Covet means you look at what she's wearing and you won't wear that too. God said, don't do that. That's the law. It's against the law to do that. Why? That could break you. You crush your life trying to be like the Joneses on the rocks of pride. And some folks, even when the boat break up, they still pretending the boat good. <laughs> you know, we walk around as if we're just smarter than God. Write this one down. Lighthouses never threaten by storms of, or, or ships. Listen to me. You cannot threaten a lighthouse. When the storm comes, the lighthouse stands right in the middle of the storm. Hurricanes, no hurricane ever hit the lighthouse out in the western Espionade, ever. It stands in every storm, and one thing you'll find standing after that storm is over is that lighthouse. It's always there. All my life has been there. We had many storms that just stands there, because the word of God is always stable. Now, if you are in the lighthouse, in a storm, Lord have mercy, if the lighthouse is still standing, then you know everything going to be all right. If you got your own boat and you don't feel safe, get into the lighthouse. Get into a law of God. Hide yourself into the word of God so that when everything around you is blowing and falling apart, you know, the name of the Lord is like a strong lighthouse. They who run into it, give God a hand for safety. The laws of God will protect you.
And number six is a big one. That's why it's in yellow. Lighthouses. Submission to a lighthouse provides protection. When you obey the lighthouse, the lighthouse says, don't come here. You protect your ship. Every law of God, when you submit to it, protects you. Laws do not destroy. They protect. And number seven, lighthouses are used as a guide and a measure to protect your life. You want to obey the laws of God as a guide. It protects you. And number eight, lighthouses protect life. That's why you have a lighthouse. The laws of God protect life. And number 10, number nine rather, lighthouses can never be violated. You know, <laughs> you heard the story of the two admirals who were doing their exercises in the, in the, in the North Sea near Alaska. And you know, in Alaska, during the summer season, there's a lot of fog because of the cold air. And you can hardly see up there. But they do a lot of training up there in that area. Even the Russians do it because there, there are not any ships coming through there too much. So they can practice warfare, you know, naval exercises. And this is a true story. They say the two admirals were doing exercises in the North Sea up there. And the fog came down. They couldn't see each other. And one of them, of course, went off to the opposite direction to make sure he doesn't, you know, uh, collide with the other ship. Massive warships. And suddenly, one of the men on the deck saw a light. And obviously, you know, his conclusion, that's the other ship. So he reported it to the admiral, and he says, we've got, you know, uh, our other ship over there, and they're heading in our direction. And so the admiral says, send a message to him, you know, with the message light to tell him that he must turn three degrees to the north so we don't collide. And of course he kept on going toward the light. And so the sailor went up and he did the light and the message, you know, sent was, please change your ship three, de three degrees to the right so that we do not collide. And he waited for an answer. He looked at the light and an answer came back. The answer says, you turn three degrees to the right. So the admiral became a little bit perturbed. How dare you refuse my instruction? So he said, send another message. Tell him to turn three degrees to the right or I will ram him. And the sailor sent the message and the light sent a message back. It says, you turn three degrees to the right or I will ram you. By this time, the admiral is angry. He is insulted. back he said tell him if he does not turn three degrees immediately I will put on speed and I will ram him and destroy him and then at the end of the message he says you tell him I am Admiral so and so from the naval so and so so D D D P D D D D M A B B D he said tell him who I am and the guy sent a message back you turn three degrees to the right, or we will ram you. So says Admiral BDD, DDD, PhD, DDD. That's who I am. And the light sent a message back saying, 
You turn to the grids to the right. And I am the lighthouse. <laughs> the admiral quickly turned to the grids. <laughs> and that's life. If God says to turn, you better turn. Or you are going to crash on the rocks. The lighthouse is always in charge. And it's there to protect you. And finally, lighthouses is the law of life. God gave us laws so we don't crash. It is my prayer today that you will fall in love this year with the laws of God. And you will take that Bible up again and not use it as a religious book anymore. You will use it as the laws of God. You will study it to find the laws so you can obey the laws and protect the ship that you are living in, which is your life. And may the Lord give you the wisdom to be able to recognize the difference between a buoy and a lighthouse. Thank you very much. And God bless you. Thank you once again for listening to this message as we hope that it has been a blessing to you. Our goal is to show you new paths and opportunities so that you can discover your purpose. It is your love, support, and partnership that makes Monroe Global possible. Please visit us online at www.monroeglobal.com for more product, partnership, or to join us at one of our live events around the world.